rapid transit has become a part of the metropolitan Washington scene, the result of efforts that date back almost to the turn of the century. Today, it's a reality, no longer just a hope or a dream. It has become an efficient, fast way to get from place to place. It's a system that is growing and developing to help meet the transportation needs of ever-increasing numbers of metropolitan Washington residents and visitors. The system quickly became part of the Washington area daily life after its first section opened in March 1976. From that beginning, Metro has continued its outward growth to aid mobility and add to the quality of life of more and more metro area residents. Public meetings, plans, and construction have brought us from this to this. From dream to reality. The transit system does many things for people, and Metro is firmly rooted in the people of the metropolitan region. The people who overwhelmingly supported Metro in the 1968 referendum. The thousands of people who attend scores of meetings held every year to determine public needs. The people of eight separate political jurisdictions who have banded together in a unique collaboration with the federal government to work for the common good. Metro is giving people a whole new way to get around. For many, an alternative to this. To this. To this. And to this. But a rapid rail system is more than a means of avoiding inconvenient traffic situations. Metro will help enlarge the scope of our lives, where we live, where we play, where we work. Living in the suburbs will be easier. A quick, quiet, air-conditioned ride puts you downtown for work. Or entertainment. in the city, expanded job and leisure activities in the suburbs will be a short ride away. As individuals, we benefit through a better quality of life in general. And employers benefit too because Metro helps to put a wider range of people and skills within their reach. All 
all this contributes to better community planning and controlled growth. If Washington fits the pattern of other cities that have new transit systems, commercial and industrial investment in the region should rise, creating new jobs and expanding the economic base. There are still other benefits. The area's many attractions become more accessible for tourists and residents alike, without parking and traffic problems. Helping to reduce the number of cars on the road, Metro contributes to cleaner air. In an energy conscious era, Metro will make a lot of sense to many of us as a practical means of transportation. effectiveness of rapid rail transit is due to its exclusive right-of-way. Metro does not have to compete for space in its transportation corridor. Hence, no traffic jams. No stoplights. No long waits. Just train after train, moving people. Everything about Metro has been designed with people in mind. It's convenience, comfort, safety, and beauty. All were tailored for people, based on studies of other systems around the world. Trains are managed and monitored at the Operations Control Center. This center uses a computer to maintain schedules and the proper spacing of trains. Normally, trains will be controlled automatically, even though each train has an attendant. However, the train attendant is able to take full control by switching to the manual mode. Information needed by the train attendant is displayed on his console. The trains themselves are coupled in units two to eight cars in length. Each car has seats for 81 passengers with room for 94 to stand. designed to provide comfortable transportation in every season of the year. Noise is minimized by the use of cushioned rails throughout the system. Rails are welded together to produce smooth joints and quiet operation. In certain areas, trains run on rails that have been laid on concrete slabs that actually float on thick pads of sound insulation. The result is quiet. The edge of the platform has a rough surface that contrasts with the main platform to indicate closeness to the tracks. The underground stations, just like the trains, are air-conditioned for year-round comfort. The waiting platforms have been moved away from the wall to allow for comfortable indirect lighting and to discourage graffiti. Pylons carry important station and route information. Getting to and from the trains is easy, with special elevators provided for the severely handicapped. Spacious vaults with high ceilings give a timeless quality to station design, 
while providing structural strength and an unobstructed view for safety's sake. Metro Zone Security Force will patrol trains and stations. Station attendants man kiosks located on mezzanines. From their vantage point, they maintain constant surveillance of the station, aided by closed circuit TV to cover areas not directly visible. Wide entrances allow easy movement during the busiest of hours and plenty of advance warning on outside weather conditions. About half of the system is underground. The other half is on or above the surface. There are a few aerial stations, such as Rhode Island Avenue. The station's gull wing canopy is not only a variation of the graceful arches of underground stations, but it also provides protection against inclement weather. Additional protection is provided by windscreens located along the platform. Most of the surface stations function as transportation interchange points. Road access and adjacent parking lots are an integral part of the majority of these stations. Metro users can park and ride, kiss and ride, transfer from the Metro bus, lock up their bikes, wheel in, or walk in. And because the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority supervises bus transit as well as rapid rail, these transportation centers will become increasingly important as bus and rail transportation blend to serve people. People. That's Metro here. That's Metro now. That's Metro in the future. Your future. Our community's future.